this is the Council on Aging. This, this is the chairman of the Shrewsbury Council on Aging. Please permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Now, are we going to expect anybody from the staff? Holly? Uh, so I've excused them for today and there were no updates. Okay. So I will just go through and list the, the board members. Director Holly looked. Here. Vice Chair Zoya Mehta. Vice Chair Zoya Mehta. Remember to, everybody uh, is on, remember to take yourself off from mute. I think I need to go do this. <coughs> Louise Russell. Can you hear me? Why is it you can't hear me? Sasha, you can you can unmute Louise if you want. No, I'm not. I'm on, but can you hear me? A yes. lot of people seem to have turned off Christine. Is that better? Is that better? Yes, I can hear you now. You're okay. present. Barbara is present. Christine is present, and even though she's got her thing turned off. All right. Moving right along. In, this is the introduction that I'm required to read at a remote meeting. This open meeting of the, of the Council on Aging Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly, in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberation of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. But this meeting of the Council on Aging Board is convening by video conference using the, uh, what do you call this application? The uh, meetings, app, the, the Google Meet application as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. For Zoom or Google Hangout meetings, please note that this meeting is being recorded, that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please aware that other folks may be able to see you and that Take care not to screen share on your computer unless asked by the chairperson or the staff person. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Here are the business, the meeting, meeting business ground rules. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda, but before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business. I, the chair, will introduce each board member or staff members who have the lead role for this particular item or guest speaker associated with this item. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members first and then staff members, each by name, to provide any comments or question. I will then call upon the members to offer a motion and then for a second. Please hold until your name is called. Further. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Remember that unless a document is being shared, your camera feed is triggered by your speaking or the background noise. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. I think there are no others in the audience, so I don't have to read the last part. So moving along to the first item on the in the agenda, which is to review and accept 
the July 2020 minutes. Does anybody have any questions? Well, I have I have several questions. Um, uh, I have this is Norma. I have one question. Yes, go ahead, Norma. I I want to know if um, budget reports and general fund are considered the same. Is the budget and the general fund the same? The reason I'm saying n number three. Christine reviewed financial and budget reports, and right underneath that it says general fund operating expenses. I want to know if budget and general fund are the, sa are the same. Uh, Norma, the budget is just talking about the accounts in, as a whole. Uh, general fund is a specific account. Because one of the accounts was always considered, we had four accounts. One of them was named budget, but now I keep on seeing general fund. I want to know if budget and general fund are the same. Um, on my reports, they are not. I can't speak to what's been done in the past. So they are not the same? So, oh my, so, so sorry, Christine. So just to clarify, Norma, the budget is all of the accounts overall. The, ge the general account is just about the general fund where we get the money from the town. Okay, so before we, we used to call that budget. Okay, so, all right. All right, so you're calling all the funds together the budget, all right. Yes. Okay, that's slightly different from what we had been and, and I, yep, and I realized that um, I just wanted just so, just so I know, I, I don't want to get confused here. All right. Yeah. Nope, fair question. Thank you, Norma. Okay. All right. I have, I have a question. In item four, Cynthia Willis reviewed the transportation items. The van service started back in use in June 15th. Then it says, after each client, the van is cleaned. I don't Correct. understand what that means. The entire so, van is cleaned every time somebody gets off and gets on? So if I might, um, so between each rider, uh, we do have time allotted for the drivers to clean off uh, the van, where they sat, any items that they may have touched, it also gives the drivers an opportunity to um, change their gloves, sanitize their hands. Um, so the, yes, that happens every time a new rider gets on the van and leaves the van. That way- so, Okay, so only that general area that's being cleaned, not the entire van. That's what I was not no. clear about. You want to reword that somehow? Yep, so, so we, can, we can make those adjustments on the minutes. Okay. And a professional, on Friday, a professional disinfectant is applied to what? To the entire van? Yes. Okay, so we got to clarify that. Yes, so it's just so I can clarify it now, uh, verbal. So every Friday, once the driver, van driver is parked the, car, the vans, they have a, a red sheet inside their van and they have a green sheet inside their van. And they are supposed to take their red sheet and put it on top of the uh, on top of the um, dashboard of each van that is used for the week, and that shows the town um, facilities department that that van is in fact dirty. Once they come in on Fridays, um, somewhere between three and six o'clock um, in the afternoon, they pull that red they pull the red uh, paper and they put a green paper so the so when the van drivers arrive on Monday morning, they know that those vans have been sterilized. So we can we can surely add that and revise the, the minutes to that. Okay, the reason I'm being a little picky now, and I was in the past, is because we talked about this, Holly, that we plan to publish the minutes on the web. And if it is going to be published on the web, then you have to assume that anybody any senior or any resident of Shrewsbury can go on the web and read it. 
and it has to be written in a way that is clear to anyone reading it, not just a member of the board or a member of the senior center. They have to understand it. Uh, my next couple of comments are along the same lines. Like Shashi, instance, Shashi, can I just interrupt for one second? So sure. um, just, just the fact that um, doing the minutes and getting them up with you know, there's a lot of, I just want to, I just want to take a moment just because a lot of people have a lot of work at stake here. So, you know, Barbara has been taking, I think, fantastic minutes and, and Christine has been putting them up. So I think that just, we can fix this as long as we have the open communication. So I appreciate the fact that you're bringing that up so we can all work together as a team to make sure that we have the minutes, um, as, as, um, informative as we can and in the correct places. So I just wanted to mention that. So if you want to keep going, go ahead. Okay. The other thing is uh, that I have a little bit of heartburn with is the use of acronyms. Like for instance, PPE is not defined anywhere. You look through the document and somebody who doesn't know what PPE means, personal protective equipment. I think the general rule is if you use an if you want to use an acronym the first time you come across it you have to define it and then after that you can keep saying ppe anytime you want that applies to wrta ppe care act and things like that that the ordinary citizen ordinary person going online may not know what these things mean good point and so noted we will we will get that fixed okay the next question i have in the next paragraph it says elder affairs. Now, I'm not clear who elder affairs is. Is it elder services of Worcester area or is this the EOEA in Boston? No, elder affairs is its own. Um, this is where we get our formula grant money. Uh -huh. uh, yep, so this is uh, the same uh, place where I get my information on what we can and cannot do with our formula grant uh budgets they tell us all they tell us all kinds of information elder services is completely different that's a worcester organization okay um connect and assist i had one more question this is maybe some people may say this is being picky but at the very end it says respectively I think it should be respectfully because respectively means something after in sequence. This is assigned to this and this is assigned to this respectively. But I think you meant to say respectfully. Cliff has joined the meeting and I was wondering if Cliff has any comments before you go. I can't hear you, you gotta unmute it. You gotta unmute the bottom right hand corner. Cliff, you're on mute. Cliff, you're on mute. <laughs> mute, unmute. There we go. Oh, that's better. Okay. So I, I don't know whether I'm officially on the board or not at this moment. I don't think I am. I submitted a letter of resignation. I didn't date it. I just said I would be ineligible as of September 1st. But but I did want to check in and just say hello to everybody. <laughs> that's my main reason for being here. <laughs> It's been a pleasure to be on this board and it's been especially a pleasure to get to know some of you people that I either didn't know before or didn't know very well before. And uh, I'm going to miss being on the board. I'm going to miss Shrewsbury. Um, I know we chose to move to a different town not far away, but but still uh, we have long roots. I've lived in Shrewsbury 44 years and my wife's lived here her whole life. So uh, uh, it's a wonderful town and uh, I think the Council on Aging is going in good and healthy directions these days. And so I, I leave with a certain satisfaction. Cliff, I would like to say- Goodbye, but not forever. Yeah. I'm around. <laughs> Cliff, I would like to say, even though I've only been on since January, you've been um, a wealth of information on the board. Um, I appreciate all of the information that you and your wife, Mary, have given us and um, dedicated to the town of Shrewsbury. And I can only hope that Mary will stay on um, and assist with the Memory Cafe, hopefully when the normal comes. And if and if for something should if she should move on to the town of West Boylston, I, uh, I just I hope the town of West Boylston realizes how lucky they are to have two such great 
community members come to them. So it's been my pleasure working with you in a few short months. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my understanding is Mary intends to continue on. However, I, I know Dennis Gogan is something on the on the uh, the whatever the board is in Shrewsbury on on age and Boylston on aging. And Dennis was uh, Mary's supervisor, and when she was <laughs> learning to be a social worker, so he may latch on to her. I don't know, but I, I, she still wants to work in Shrewsbury. Good. That's, That's good. good. Yeah. That's good. Um, Fantastic. Well, Cliff, you know, you're welcome to uh, stay on because I do believe that uh, when we received your resignation, it was um, active immediately. You're welcome to stay on and listen to the rest of uh, today's agenda. Or, you know, if, if anybody has anything that they want to say, if Cliff decides to sign off, please feel free to do so now. Oh. Yeah, Cliff? Hello, Sasha, can I speak? Yes, you may. Go ahead. Um, we can't thank you enough, Cliff, for all that you have done for the board. We said we always look to you for our help when we got in a tight spot. And our, our wordsmith, as I call you, when we were writing our long range plan, and uh, you would, and I said, if, if we get in trouble again and we really need some help, I think maybe we could surreptitiously maybe phone call and uh, and see if you could work out a word for us that we're looking for. But we thank you for all that you have done. Your contribution to the town has just been marvelous, as well as Mary's has too. I've enjoyed working with her. Thank you so much, Cliff. Thank you. Sure, if there's anything I can ever do, I'm only three quarters of a mile out of Shrewsbury, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we have your email, and we are not worried. <laughs> right. Um, Shishi, may I speak? Anyone else? Any questions? Shishi? Any observations? Shishi, may I speak? I'm still on mute, I guess. Yes, go ahead. Um, Cliff, thank you so much for being on the board with all of us. I uh, had the pleasure of talking to you about a lot of other things other than the COA board, <laughs> and I'm grateful for that. And wishing you all the best. Thank you. Well, I might as well add my thank you also. Thank you all. You've all been too kind. You can, you, are you, you're going to stay on, or shall I move on? Are you having anything else you want to add? Anybody else want to add? No. Go ahead, I... Barbara. Uh, Cliff, West Boylston is wonderful. I have some really good friends living in West Boylston. You're going to love it there. You're going to love it. We're in Boston, actually. Not oh, you right. are? Yes. <laughs> That's funny. But right anyway. off of Sewell Street. If you keep going on Sewell Street out of Shrewsbury, you come. Oh, okay. By the way. No. <laughs> so well, you'll... I'll miss you anyway. Thank you. Thank you. So you'll be closer to Holly and to, uh, and to Kristen. Yes. They both. You both live in Boylston, right? Actually, I just moved within the last two weeks. Now I'm in Lemonster, so I'm even further away. But it was... <laughs> <laughs> So, so just for time's sake, if we can keep moving on, yes. Cliff, we, will we, keep can, moving we on. can't wait to see you again. Uh, yeah, you can stay on. Leave. I was going to say, I'll lurk for a while, if that's okay. All right, just mute the, the speaker. Okay. Um, do we need a motion for the minutes? Yes. yes, we do. I move to accept the minutes. I second. I Barbara? Yes. Christine? Yes. Christine, Christine Kim. Christine Kim, hold on that. It has to be Norma. Yes. Norma? Yes, accept. So all have accepted and the move, motion is passed. The, the next item is the, to review and act on the financial reports. Christine, you're on. Hello. So um, included in the documents that I sent yesterday are is the summary sheet. Um, st starts with fiscal year 21 budget with the account information, payroll, and miscellaneous notes. Um, just to touch on this briefly, we still don't know exactly how much we're going to get for the formula grant this year. Um, so that's still to be determined. 
Um, I have the updated amounts for each of the accounts here, as well as the payroll account and the operating expenses based off of the uh, budget for fiscal year 21 that was voted on this past weekend. Um, so just to go over that quickly, um, the DOT grant, we have $18,408.62. The gift fund, we have $43,844.70. Revolving account, $16,753.07. Um, payrolls, $258,399. And the general fund uh, op operating expenses only is $25,454. And there's a breakdown in there as well if you want to see that. Um, in the last meeting, Louise had asked what the ca Memory Cafe reimbursements were for fiscal year 20. Um, going back through the previous budgets, I calculated it out to $2,780.40. Not all of them were properly labeled. So some of these might have been um, other programs that were run by the Friends of Shrewsbury that we paid reimbursements for. Um, they weren't all properly labeled if they were or were not memory cafe expenses. Um, so this number could be off a little bit, but it's well below the 4,000 limit um, that you had set previously. So any questions on the summary page? Um, Shashi? Shashi? Oh, I'm sorry, do you have a question? Louise? May I? Yes. yes. Um, I'm on the gift account again. Um, it says the 43800 On this other sheet, with the orange here, um, it has an expense of $16,953. Oh, I, I apologize. That's a typo. Um, it it should be it should be the the amount from the account uh, summary sheet. Um, that's just the, I I apologize for that. I thought I had caught it um, before I sent it out. Um, so we only well, had we only had two hundred dollars in expenses uh, for the gift account for um, two different memory cafe sessions. So it it should. That sixteen thousand expenses. That's a typo in my formula. Okay, so it goes from forty four down to forty three. Okay, that makes more sense. So I apologize. I, for that. I'm sorry. I couldn't figure it out. And uh, okay, thank you, Christine. Shashi, if I may. Please do. I just want to. Um, I just want to let people know that I have been working with Mary uh, for the Memory Cafe this past month and. We've had, uh, she's had very low turnout. So she has decided to do a different um, route to cancel the memory cafes for August um, and to go a different route in September just because um, there was, she just didn't see a need in um, spending the friends of money or our money uh, with such low turnout. So the, she's looking to do something a little bit different with Mark Sarah. Um, I believe that's who she mentioned. So for for that, for next month, will be a little bit different. But I just wanted to let people know that our virtual programs for our seniors just haven't been working out the way we would like. And I'm sure most of that is either because some of the seniors or a lot of the seniors don't have computers or just don't understand how to jump on. So I think that Mary making that decision was um, a, a good one. But I did just want to let the board know that that will change a little bit for uh, August and September. Go ahead, Cliff. Yeah, Go I just ahead. wanted to amplify that a little bit. The The reality is that of the, the cafe, really only two couples have been reached at all by the, and even then um, with people with dementia, online stuff doesn't work. So the, the, the demented party was wandering away and meanwhile, they had a full room, but they were they were people involved in other memory cafes all around the area. There's kind of a network of people, and and they're all going to one another's cafes, but not, none of them are reaching people. So she wants to see if she can find a way to to reach out and keep that group together. Barbara, do you have a question? Anybody else? Go ahead, Christine. Okay, so moving on to the blue and orange sheets with the account breakdowns. 
Um, these just give you an idea of some of the expenses, or all of the expenses, I apologize, for the month, uh, the end of July into the beginning of August. Um, so something I do want to touch upon is because we don't necessarily know exactly how much we're going to get for the formula grant, I've just listed the expenses that we have. So that's not an account balance that's listed there. That's just the amount that we've spent so far in fiscal year 21. Shashi, if I may, just so I can make a comment on the formula grant. Uh, so uh, I, I have been in touch with Elder Affairs to try to get confirmation whether or not we will receive the same amount that we have in the past, was, which is about $79,000 and some change. The only reason why that would change is obviously because of COVID has uh, really obstructed a lot of budgets, including elder affairs. So there is a possibility that where we were at $12 a senior last year, it could go down. Um, I don't believe it would go down any more than $10, but that definitely would interrupt our budget. Um, those usually come out, uh, the budget, the formula grant application usually comes out somewhere in September, uh, early October at the very latest. So hopefully within another 30 days or so, we'll know what our formula grant budget is. But I just wanted to explain to people that that's why Christine keeps mentioning that there might be some fluctuation in change uh, with that amount. So that, I just wanted to add that. Uh, I, I this is Norma. I have a I have a request to comment. Go ahead. Um, when we receive this breakdown of the different accounts, I would like a breakdown in each account of the expenses. So when I read it, I will know what these expenses really were. So Norma, I do include the, the vendor that we paid as as well as a description so for example looking at the very first box for the general fund operating expenses we have verizon verizon cell phones those are the cell phones that the van drivers i mean I, you know even the gift account i mean i i see the amount of expenses but in uh, in reading it i really don't know what they are i mean it, that goes for all the accounts when i read what the expenses are i don't know what they are I would like a breakdown of the expenses and in um, the monthly ac account reports. If you follow uh, what I'm interrupt, I think that I'm not sure that we have the kind of time to review in it, or even if it's appropriate for us to review budget in that level of detail as to every item. Some of the things are left to the discretion of the director as to what the spent money should be spent on. Is, does the board have any opinion on that? Anyone? Uh, Shashi? Go ahead. Um, did Norma get a copy of the, the listing? Did she get a copy? It has the gift account and um, the revolving account and the DOT grant. Did, did Norma get a copy of that sheet? Uh, I did not dis distribute them unless Holly did. did we put did together a packet, it? and I believe Donna delivered them to her yesterday. Norma, can you confirm you received the packet? Well, well I have. It's, what I have, it just tells um, the account the, in each account. It tells the beginning balance and the expenses and what's left. But I have no idea what you know what the expenses went for. It's in orange. It has orange. Uh, no, orange. I, I don't have. I don't have any breakdown. I, I wouldn't necessarily bring it up for discussion, but for my own, you know, knowledge, I would like to know what exp what the expenses actually were. All I all I have is t the totals. There's no chart underneath the totals. There's like, for example, the gift account should have two line items, one for 713 Memory Cafe with Shelly Otis for $100, and then 810 well, Memory Cafe with, with Lynn Canavan for another $100. You don't see that on your, your sheet? Well, well, that's that, that comes to 200 but I have no idea what the 16000 was. That That's what I'm referring to. 
That was a mistake. Um, Luis had brought that up earlier. That's a typo in my formula, and I, I apologize for the discrepancy there. It should only say two hundred dollars. Oh, so the balance is more than twenty-seven thousand. Yes. So if you look at the account summary page um, that says fiscal year 21 budget at the top, that has the correct account balance. Oh, well, see, I don't have an account summary page. Okay. All right. That, that, that's, that's what was um, concerning me and confusing me. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone? Any comments? All right, in that case, we can move on to the next item. I think, Christine, you're done, right? Um, I do just want to point out on the DOT grant, we had originally thought that we had more money in there than we do. Um, so after a meeting with Mary Thompson, the town accountant, we realized that some WRTA reimbursements were mistakenly deposited into this account, and they should have gone back into the general fund. So we were able to give back $22,087.31 to the town, but that did bring our account balance to $18,408.62. So there were just a couple corrections there. Joshi? Go ahead, Louise. Um, just as a side, not as a discussion today, but a thought for the future, that has been a sticking point for years and years that the money goes to the general account and not back to the COA. And I think maybe it might be time for somebody to, to take that to the town fathers and see um, why and how we can get that money back where it belongs. I mean, it hasn't been addressed in a long time. And when this came up, I thought that would be maybe a good time to do that to, uh, because that money should be going back to the COA and not to the general fund. So it's just a point of something to look forward to. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me, Louise, can you repeat that? You're saying there's a misallocation of funds? No, this has been going on for years and years and years and years. And there's never been any recognition that all this money, the thousands of dollars that the COA does not get, that should be getting. And um, so uh, I know when Tim Swiss was, was a chair many years ago, that he said, finally they got it into the, goes out every year, uh, that the, the amount was given to the town treasury and not to the COA, 35,000. So that should be accredited. And nothing has ever been done since then. And I think it just, just brought it to my mind that I think maybe it's time to bring it up again and see how we can, if there is a way, I don't know. There may not be a way. It may be some law or something. I don't know. But it would be something to look into to get that money back into the uh, the monies that you thought where, the, where it was originally and where they took it out of. So uh, just a thought. Nothing to talk about today, but just a thought. To, to look into them for the future. But Louise, does this require more investigation? Does Holly have to get in on this? What do you think, Holly? So if I may, so Christine is correct. We were looking at all of the accounts uh, a few weeks ago. And what I noticed was that the DOT account, there had been no withdrawals for quite some time. So with the fact that there was no withdrawals, it kind of raised our eyebrows, Christine, me, and Mary Thompson from accounting. And so we went digging and the $20,000 was, was deposited into the incorrect account. We did receive a grant from the DOT. So they put forward the money so we can go there for and spend it. And then there's a match. So then the reason why it's matched is that comes from the general fund. And once the DOT map gives us the money, it goes back to the general fund. So it's more of money that, so we can make sure that we can actually continue to operate. Um, so, and to be honest, there is still an $18,000 and some odd change in that account that we're still trying to account for um, because 
I don't believe that there should be even a DOT account to begin with. Um, again, we've, we went back through the, I, Christine, correct me if I'm wrong. We went back through 2019 and 2018 and there were no withdrawals from the DOT account, which just didn't make any sense. And like I said, with a little bit of investigative work, we found out that, um, that money shouldn't have even gone in there. It should have gone into the general or back into the general fund. So right now we're still even trying to figure out that other $18,000 that still sits there. Um, I'm waiting to have a couple of conversations with DOT and with all this remote work, it hasn't been easy um, to figure out where that money goes, go, you know, goes towards. Um, but again, if that, I and Louise is correct. Had that money gone into the general fund when it was supposed to, because this was done prior to myself coming on to Shrewsbury and Christine, we could have been able to use that money. The good thing is, is that with your investigative group, myself, Christine, and Mary, we were able to figure out that here's some money. And you know what? Right now, the town needs it more than ever. So, you know, it was good to have it to the town. Yeah. Okay. Norma? I said it's just been an issue that's been through the years. It's been an issue. And, you know, we haven't brought it up recently. Mm -hmm. So, um, It'll be interesting to see how you can find out that where that money is. Okay. Thank you, Shashing. Norma, did you have a question? Norma. No answer. All right. Any other questions on the uh, on the uh, financial matters and the financial reports? Anybody else? Okay. I think we are safe to move along. Next item on the agenda is item 4A, which is feasibility study. But before we get into the feasibility study, I have a question or observation of Holly. My understanding of this whole exercise is that it is a study. It's not necessarily a plan. But looking at all the options and figuring out what is feasible, I think we really won't know what we can do because if you listen on listen in on those meetings with the with Patrick, you'll see that they talk a lot about survey. They have to survey the property, the entire campus, to see where there's room where they can actually build. It doesn't mean that because we have room to one side or the other side, we can actually build there and what our needs are. So based upon that, they can only come up with a general recommendation, and then they have to go into detailed planning before they can come up with a cost. Am I right? What do you say, Holly? So you are you are correct. Um, and just so we can talk about the feasibility study and not spend too much time on it, I don't know um, how many people logged on to the last uh, meeting that they had, which was, uh, I think, two weeks ago now. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make that one. However, uh, it was discussed by the Board of Selectmen that the only building that, they're, that they have approved at this time is the police station. So the town hall is put on the back burner. The senior center is put on the back burner um, until, until we hear uh, more. So to be honest, I don't think that the feasibility study at this moment um, needs any more discussion. It doesn't mean that on our own time we can't email and talk back and forth. Um, it looks as though at this time the only the only building that's going to get done is the police station. And I think we all knew at the very beginning that that was the main priority. Um, again, I just, I just want to make sure that we utilize our time um, efficiently. And it, it's my suggestion that we, uh, unless there's any other comments that need to be done, that we just keep moving on through the director's report. Sawyer? My question was, uh, should COA board never be a representative on this committee? So um, invitations went out through town management and I sit on there as a representative as the Council on Aging. I don't believe that there are board members um, from any other department on there. Uh, but if you feel like you need to reach out to town management and ask them if you can, that is fine but I am the one that represents the Council on Aging on that particular day. I have one question. Uh, Norma, excuse okay. me. Okay, 
Um, so I uh, is saying I can just ignore this diagram that I received from the feasibility study. So that, yes, so you can put that aside until a later date. That was the latest update on the senior center floor plan. So I wouldn't say throw it away. I would say file it away uh, until it becomes appropriate to discuss. Oh, all right, all right, because I had some comments on it, but I'll hold them. All right. I have a, I have a general comment. I have a general comment. As you know, I have been circulating my own view of things, but it may be premature to talk about any of that. However, I want to point out to you that there is a document. Hang on. There is an EOEA document that describes what we're supposed to be doing, what the projected changes in the demographics are going to be, all that kind of stuff. It talks about all the different services that we that we are expected to provide, and so on and so forth. So my recommendation is that you get. I can send you. Uh, I will, if you like, circulate this EOEA document. The plan covers 2018 through 2022. It comes from Alice Bonner in the EOEA office, and it talks about all the different things that the senior centers, the elder services. Of what you know, all that people, all the different kinds of things and services we're supposed to provide. If you were to look through this document, you will see, get you, make you think about the kind of things that we could be thinking about for the future. And I'm just going to keep this document updated so that when the time arrives, if it arrives, we'll pull this out and then that'll be our starting point. I think I have a call of a question from Norma. Norma, you're on. No. What? Joshi? Yes, Norma and uh, Louise. I had a question about um, security. We have been talking about security for a couple of years. Every time we bring it up, they say, well, it'll be part of the feasibility study. It'll be part of the feasibility study. First, putting that on the back burner. Um, what do we, we want cameras. We have wanted them for a long time. We have talked to everybody that we know and we have not gotten any place. I found a document in going through some of my things uh, from the library. I mean, they have had cameras for several years now. Maybe when the new building was put up, maybe they put the, the cameras in, I'm not sure. And yet we are not seemingly able to, if the, Feasibility study is now closed to us as a as a way to get our cameras. What can we do? Where can we go? What process? I guess. Holly, Shashi, Shashi, if I may. So, uh, Louise, you are correct, and um, I'm already on top of that, and have contacted our IT department as well as our public facilities department, trying to figure out ways to uh, go about putting cameras up in in all the locations where there is an entrance. So we are in the process of working on that. And I think if nothing else that COVID, COVID hasn't done anything positive, it is allowing us a little bit more time to get that particular task done. So just know that that is on my radar and I've already been communicating in the past with other departments to, to try to figure that out. Um, the only thing that, that it makes it a little harder, obviously, so COVID is good in one way for because giving yeah. us the other part COVID is bad because um, you know people just don't have the time or the resources to come in right now. But we are in fact working on that. Oh, good. Thank you. It's nice to know. Thank you, Holly. Holly, I have I have some observations on that. As far as security cameras go, there are two separate issues here. One is the one that John Covey talk, keeps talking about. And that is the security of all the municipal buildings from a vandalism or security of the building standpoint. But we have another issue in that we have to monitor the inside of the buildings when the buildings do open, because we have to monitor, like for instance, somebody flipped, slipped and fell on the ice a couple of years ago. 
and uh, that person needed help. Nobody saw it. That kind of things can go on within the senior center. And so we need internal monitoring. Is there something we could be doing with, I'm not saying entirely our budget, but maybe share it with the town or something like that for monitoring of the seniors inside the building? So again, that falls in the same category as um, as the entrance doors, as having place having cameras on at, at each room um, of the facility. And so we're trying to work through various phone companies and other private uh, organizations that could help us uh, install those cameras. Whether it's something that we piggyback on that the rest of the town is doing, or something that we can look into ourselves. So, uh, like I said, we are in the we are kind of in the beginning stages of it, just because COVID has kind of um, made us take about ten steps back. But it is something that I'm working on uh, diligently with, like I said, the other couple of departments. Oh, good. So, can you report back to us for the next meeting, maybe why where we stand? Sure, I can definitely give you an update, and we'll put that on uh, the agenda for uh, September. Okay, great. Uh, if Sashi, may I keep going down the director's report? Absolutely, go ahead. Okay, so uh, for B, we have van transfer. So uh, Joel Kimball, the fleet maintenance foreman for sure, did go down to Lynn and did uh, inspect the vehicle that will be transferred over to us, and it was all in great condition. Um, the only uh, hurdle, I guess, that we faced is uh, with the van plates because the bill of sale and the title were actually uh, the, to the the person that it got made out to was incorrect. So we're we're revising that. Um, so it says the town of Shrewsbury instead instead of saying the uh, Shrewsbury town and aging. So we are in the process of fixing those, as I mentioned, the title and the bill of sale. And it doesn't look like it's going to get done this week because then it has to go through the insurance. So I would expect by sometime next week that new van will be over um, at, at in our parking lot, uh, which will bring our to four. And while we're talking about the van, I just want to give a quick update from Cynthia. She says that uh, the total count of trips for July 2020 was 184. And despite only having one rider on the van at a time, ridership is steadily increasing. Uh, and we have found a lot of those riders coming from the Shrewsbury Housing Authority. So um, I'm looking for the van transfer. If we can't fill the vans with uh, riders all of the time, I am. I have been working closely with Christine to perhaps um, be able to utilize one of the vans um, to help deliver uh, any kind of meals or any any other services that we can provide. Looking forward to the fall and winter. We will not deliver grab and go meals because uh, the grab and go meals come from Elder Services of Worcester. So if people want those meals delivered, they'll have to apply for Meals on Wheels which is essentially the same thing. Um, grab and go is kind of uh, periodically, whenever you feel like that might be a good meal, whereas Meals on Wheels, it's a repetitive delivery. So um, going forward, if we use the van, it would if we use an extra van, perhaps uh, I've been working with St. Anne's Food Pantry to try to figure out if there's way we can deliver food items so just things on the horizon that I'm trying to work with those other organizations, um, you know, so we can utilize the resources that we have, vans, and help out other organizations such as St. Anne's um, to, you know, get people the food that they need. Does anybody have a question on the van transfer before I move on? Uh, a quick question about the vans. There, I'm just a little concerned. The fourth van, is it something that's old, that's no longer, is it reliable? The the new van that we're acquiring from Lynn? Yeah. So, yes. So that's why, again, Old Kimball went down there. He did the inspection. It has about 54,000 miles on it. 
Um, we were able to do the match from a generous donation from the town. Um, it most certainly is reliable. The, the great thing about this opportunity that came about is the fact that even though I did apply for the, the DOT grant, the WRTA grant to acquire a new vehicle, if, if we got approved for that, as many of you know from experience, we wouldn't have received that van until uh, 2021 summer. Um, and so having this other van with 50,000 miles on it, and it seems as though the only thing that it may need is a, a new set of tires um, at some point. Um, it, it is exactly just like the rest of our fleet. So yes, we would not have approved uh, taking on this van if it wasn't uh, worthy. Okay. You may, you may continue. Okay, so moving on, um, new for this month, I added scholarship. One of the things that we've talked about uh, a few times since my coming on in January was, you know, getting the Council on Aging's name out there and, um, you know, for the better and really kind of reaching out to all age groups and, you know, getting people's attention. And what I noticed on while I've been surfing on other Council on Aging's and Senior Centers uh, websites is a lot of places do a scholarship for you know, kids in high school going like seniors going into college, um, you know, it can be any range of money from $500 to $1,000. We ask them to do a write up of, of, of pretty much anything that we wanted to. And then we kind of go over it, we look at it, and we can have some sort of ceremony. And the great thing is, is that we're giving back to our community, our younger people, which not only involves the younger people, but it involves their parents. And, and, and again, that's reaching out to people that are going to be seniors themselves or younger seniors. And, you know, it's, it's, we have, we have some money in our gift fund. And I just feel like it's time for the Shrewsbury Council on Aging. It's my, in my thought to do something positive with the money um, and to really kind of, like I said, benefit the, the community. Um, and I just wanted to bring that out there. We Nothing that we have to vote on unless people really like the idea or perhaps we can put it on next month's agenda to talk a little deeper. But like I said, I just thought it was a great opportunity to kind of give back to, to other people within the community. So just something for everybody to, to think about. Um, with that said, does anybody have any questions? I think that's a great, may I? Yes. Shashi? Yeah. Can no, I'm, I'm all set. Go ahead. Um, I think it's a great idea. We have funds in our gift fund and just piling it on doesn't make any sense. I think we, if we utilize it in a good manner, like Holly suggested, I think it would be good for the COA and for the community. I do have a question, Holly. Shashi? Yeah, I have a question. Yep. One of the things that I keep hearing again and again is from EOEA's documentation is the need for intergenerational activity. Mm -hmm. So is this some way to draw the seniors into this process of awarding these scholarships? So the, as I mentioned, one of the things that I liked about the scholarship, and we have talked just like you said about being intergenerational, right? We're always trying to figure out how to get the younger seniors because you know, they're still working, they still have families, they still take care of their grandchildren. Um, you know, some seniors have children themselves that are still in high school and things like that. I just thought it was a good marketing experience for the Council on Aging to get out there to show that we are supporting the rest of the community, which some people, whoever we reach, most undoubtedly has seniors in their family. Um, so I just look at it as, it a, po as a positive experience and to show um, the community, the Shrewsbury community and other communities near around us that we're not just about, you know, accommodating or taking care of seniors. We're talking about taking care of everybody because as a whole, if we can all work together, the, the stigma of, of it being a senior center um, kind of goes away. And I think people, there's more of a, uh, a reason for people to inquire within what our organization and our department is about. So if we can broaden our, our legs, if you will, our horizons and, 
and add a couple of things that um, are reaching out to other community members, I think it can only really, um, you know, flourish what the Council on Aging, what we are here to do. Um, Barbara, I saw your hand up. Did you have a question? <clears throat> no, I had an idea. Um, I think that's a great idea doing a scholarship and our seniors are so, they're so intelligent and they communicate so well that we could probably get some sort of a, um, have one of the rules to get the scholarship but having them express ideas on how seniors could connect to, um, to them. I mean, they, we have such an intelligent population up there at the high school, um, wonderful writers. And um, we could even, if that was the case, we could even get one, of the, one or two or three of those published mm -hmm. in the Community Advocate and um, and these are fresh ideas, seniors, intelligent seniors who have grandmothers and grandfathers. You know, so right. I think it's a great idea. Yep, and 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 just to mention, and I know Christine can back me up. Whenever we put out uh, a request or a need from the community, the first people to reach out to us are high school seniors. Um, they've been assisting in various sorts of way with um, the newsletter. They've been reaching out on if there's other things that we can do. And I just feel it appropriate that we work together and reward those people, those kids, um, to, you know, keep encouraging volunteerism and, you know, community within their community. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I, I brought that up, because I feel as though Many of those high school students are giving back, and I think that um, that it's it's good for us to do the same. So, if you don't mind, I'm going to keep moving on. But I'm going to one minute, Holly. I think someone oh, joined sure. the meeting. Oh, Kitty Leonard says I I've only can join by phone. Okay, that's fine. We're now at the paragraph four, item item C, which is scholarship. Ahead, so, what I would, yep, so what I would like to do is, um, since we just kind of brought that out there, I'll put this on the September agenda and ask that people think about it and come with ideas um, so we can talk and elaborate a little bit more in September. So that's about the scholarship for um, under the Council on Aging. So just so to keep moving, uh, D is connect and assist. So as we mentioned last month, uh, Barbara, myself, Christine, Zoya, we've been talking about ways to connect with the town, the, the seniors in Shrewsbury, and then assist them with the resources that they need um, to live independently and a more quality of life. And I think that we're doing a fantastic job. I think that, um, that it's necessary. I think this is where the resource guide that you all have a copy of comes into play. Um, you know, it's connecting those seniors with those questions. If they have a question, and I know that we all ask ourselves all the time, where do I find this information? And, and then, you know, you're looking all over the place. And I'm hoping that that resource guide will, will answer some of the questions for, for seniors. So I want to propose something to you all. A, a, a couple of weeks ago, I sent you all a video, a Canadian vi uh, video, and it was of a RISE video. And the RISE what for them was, you know, uh, meeting the seniors' needs and coming together. And there was a particular day in which they asked people of the community to really reach out to seniors that were around them who might be isolated. And with that, I, I looked at it and I said, there's no reason why Shrewsbury can't come up with the same thing. So I want to propose and, and I've, I'm trying to figure this out with Mark Sarah too, uh, a connect and assist day in September, because as everybody knows through some of my emails, um, September's theme for the senior edition is, is in the spirit of Shrewsbury, um, which Barbara um, had brought up, up to me and I thought it was fantastic. And I thought, what a, what a better theme than September where it was our 20th celebration. It's um, the spirit of Shrewsbury has been doing the festivals for, for, for many, many years now. So I thought, why not do a connect and assist day in Shrewsbury and ask people to reach out to their isolated seniors. And the day that I chose was September 17th. And one of the reasons why I chose that, and I know it's a little silly, but it's on my part. 
it just happens to be my birthday that falls into September. And since we've been putting on the Connect and Assist Day, I thought that, I mean, I would be super proud if there was a day in, in, in Shrewsbury in, in September that we could ask people to say, connect with your seniors, connect with your neighbors and assist them, whether it's a, a small uh, friendly gesture, a phone call, a card, um, a crossword puzzle, whatever it might be. Um, but I'm looking for your approval to add that into the senior newsletter. Um, so the Connect and Assist Day, and if I may, I'll just read what I, what I wrote really quick. Um, and it just says, you know, more than 40% of seniors regularly experience loneliness. This feeling of separation and disconnection from others may predict serious health problems and even death. Many feel they have become unimportant, forgotten, and ignored. You can change this. September 17th is Connect and Assist Day. Reach out to an isolated senior on September 17th and use a simple gesture, smile, call, a card can brighten a senior's day. And at the bottom of the page, I, I put it like a little advertisement that just says volunteers needed to make friendly wellness calls to area adults. And so I'm just looking for the approval of the board to allow this to go into the newsletter um, to happen in September. Should we take a vote on I make. I think, it, I think it's necessary. I make a motion that we accept uh, Holly's proposal and put it in the September newsletter. I second that. Barbara, you, do you agree? I agree. Barbara's agreeing. Christine? I, I can't vote, but I appreciate the. Okay, you can't vote. Okay. <laughs> Sawyer? I agree. I agree. I, I agree, I, but I also think there should be an article put in um, the Advocate and you know some of the shoes and papers. So, uh, so I absolutely agree with you, Norma. I just wanted to get the approval of the board before I moved on with that, and I plan on sharing all of that information with the community advocate. I plan on having um, Christine do a news flash and email news flash on this, so people can have it to be you know, aware, it'll be, uh, stand prominent on our, our website. Again, I, I, I really think that us looking forward to the fall and the winter and, you know, making sure that we can try to connect with all of the seniors, that we can just do whatever we can do and make that possible. And I do want to thank Barbara, Zoya, and Christine for the extra time that they've put in and the extra effort um, that they put in to, you know, make this little project keep going. And again, Barbara, I thought, again, the when we met and you said that one of your friends, and I'm sorry, her name escapes me in the moment, um, to have it in the spirit of Shrewsbury, I reached out to a lot of the department heads and they just thought it was a fantastic idea. So I just thank you. And, uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, having the September newsletter go to print because I'm pretty proud of this one. So I thank you everybody for, for approving that. And uh, just to keep going, uh, e, outreach coordinator position. We have received many applications and um, I have narrowed it down to about five uh, and the um, interviews will begin next week. Um, date to, to be determined unless Christina already did it, but she was on vacation this week. So I'd have to look at my calendar again. But again, I do have five applicants that we're, we will be interviewing. Any questions on the outreach? Yes, Holly. Yep. This is going to be a full-time position? Yes. So this is the, I believe it was the 32 hours that um, it is. Yes. And this person will do whatever Walter was doing before, plus home visits and office visits and coordination. So so this, so we have... Re so we have revamped the, the, um, the job description. So there'll be less time in the office and more time in the community, which is what we were trying to get Walter to do uh, before, he, before his resignation, before his retirement. Um, so they'll be spending time at several places, the library, uh, Shrewsbury Youth and Family Services, St. Anne's Food Pantry, as well as home visits, as well as uh, hours in the office. We just thought it was necessary to uh, make move this person around and um, accommodate other seniors who may not want to come to the senior center. 
um, who may visit the library more frequently or whatever. So we have taken that one job and kind of um, dispersed it around. The, um, the So there'll be a lot less time in the office than there was previously. So this is Jenny Leonard. I have a quick question. Since um, I don't even think that, li is the library open now? So the library is not open. Okay. So of course and not. In so I, so, yeah, so I get, so my, I'm sorry to interrupt, but my question is, um, are we, it, will this person be able to set up Zoom calls you know, for anyone who actually can do a Zoom call? Um, because certainly face-to-face -face is important. I mean, some people may or may not want to have someone come to their house right now. Granted, you know, they probably have like a visiting nurse come there because they're, um, you know, they're familiar with it. And they may actually like the fact that, you know, this, that this um, member of of the senior center can come to their home. Um, but Zoom calls right now are really valuable. So, um, you know, is that is that a capacity? I mean, obviously there's a Zoom call right now, but is there a capacity for someone um, in this role to actually do Zoom calls? Uh, you know, because COVID's gonna be around, well, it'll never go away. Uh, but, um, you know, in terms of, of um, our ability to actually be with each other, um, so I think it's important um, if, if for individuals that may, you know, that are now, you know, enjoying doctor visits that way. So, so to answer, I, I, I want to, I want to address something that uh, Virginia just said. As far as face-to-face -face meetings go, uh, this is a, more of a question. When I deliver Meals on Wheels, I find the seniors hungry for contact. I find Good. them, okay. I have to keep them away. I said, no, 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 you stay behind the screen door. I'll talk to you. <laughs> and, and it's hard to keep them away because they've been alone all day. Right. And so they come to the door, they try to take the meal from my hand, all that kind of stuff. So somehow we have to figure out a way for face to face. Okay. So the other so question I had for you was the other question I have is that. At one time, I was in a meeting, actually, Luis and I were together. We were in a meeting with Kevin, and he talked about coordinating our efforts with SYFS. Is this part of your plan? Is this, are we going to be, because there, there might be some overlap of service. Okay, so ahead, I'm just trying to back up a little bit. So to answer Virginia's first, so yes, we, we, we of course, will offer Zoom to those that can Zoom. Uh, one thing that Christine and I have found trying to do virtual programs is that, um, and again, like we mentioned with uh, the Memory Cafe, we have very low turnout because people either uh, just don't have the capability of being on a computer, don't understand it. So one of the things that we have been discussing is the fact that Town Hall is now making uh, appointments uh, and where you can come in and do one-to-ones. Okay. Those are things that I am planning uh, to have the new outreach coordinator offer, whether it's um, at the senior center and perhaps, you know, it could be something that's done outside while the weather is still nice or something that needs to be, you know, can be done in the home. I think each situation, each individual is going to be different depending upon where people live, um, right. uh, what their circumstances are. Um, so, you know, those are all things that between myself, the outreach coordinator, issues for youth and family service, services, town management is all going to have to take into consideration once that position is filled. Because we want to make sure that, you know, we're still reaching out to those seniors um, that need the outreach, but doing it safe for everybody. So I think those are things that's going to be um, kind of like every day is different and we will do our best to accommodate and reach out to people. I see Zoya's hand up. I just wanted to know whether the intern from SYFS will continue with us or not. So once the position is filled, um, unless the, the intern will not continue, but that does not mean that we will still not receive assistance from SYSF, whether it's from Kelsey Finnegan, who is presently assisting us. Um, uh, she, you know, at this point, her hours are very limited. Perhaps she will be around. You know, it's it, like I said, it's just a funny time. So it's if she's I'm sure if she's available, she will assist us. Same with SYSF, because, you know, Christine Mowry and Jennifer Rifkin have just been huge assets to us, especially where we've 
lacked the outreach coordinator for so many months. So um, I'm sure if there is there's availability there, they certainly will, you know, send it our way. I have a, this is Nama. I have a question. Go ahead, Nama. Um, has the finance committee, the town approved? Um, and will they will are they going to pay for these 32 hours? Yes, that was that was already that was already approved, and that was oh. supposed to be in, in July uh, before Walter uh, retired. So yes, this position is already. Oh, all right. I I, I had not been uh, privy to that information. All right. Yep. Any other questions on that? We're just we're coming down to twenty minutes or so. The the, the only question I have is, are you getting the entire family involved? They, you may have to sometimes. So I think, like I said, every situation is different. Um, so it's kind of on an as needed basis, you know, because the outreach coordinator, when they first come in, they're going to have to go through the files that Walter had previously. They're going to have to make their own relationships. They're going to, if they don't, if they already are not familiar with SYSF, you know, it would probably uh, behoove them of forming that relationship with them to better understand the needs of Shrewsbury. Um, I do plan on requesting uh, one of the, whether Christine Murray or Jennifer Rifkin on the second round of interviews, um, just so the person that we end up uh, hiring is familiar with our procedures. So there's a, there's a lot that comes into place and this will take a little bit of time, um, but I'm confident in the fact of that we have such terrific organizations that assist that have been assisting us already that um, that we're going to power right through this and finally reach those people that need our services. Anybody else, any other questions before I keep moving on? Uh, just one obs observation. Once connect and assist takes off, you might get, you one 32 hours may not be enough. Well, I do, I do believe, I do believe that um, once connect and assist does take off, just as you mentioned, that there is an opportunity to, to form a larger subcommittee that is more than just Barbara and Zoya, um, where I can kind of let the reins go and um, chime in when necessary. So, uh, you know, I'm happy to that we that the four of us got this program going. Eventually, like I said, you know, I would want to let it go, whether or not. I mean, of course, the outreach coordinator will be part of it but to also include other members, um, whether it's the board or other volunteers in the community. I wanna make this a much bigger project or a program um, and to assist my position, to assist the outreach coordinator's position. And, you know, I, I, have, a, I have confidence that there's a lot of growth available here. And I do plan on sharing this program with other regional directors so um, that it's not just for Shrewsbury, that perhaps other, uh, you know, Council on Aging and Senior Centers, Westboro, Northboro, you know, Clinton, everybody will kind of take on this and it, it will be a bigger thing than, um, than what it is at this point. Barbara, you had a question or comment? Yes, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I got my most. The person that um, thought of that idea in the spirit of Shrewsbury is a wonderful resource. Her name is Gail Aslanian, A-S-L-A-N-I-A-N. And she is a wonderful resource. She has so many great ideas. Um, and she's also been connect connecting with other departments with that same theme. So um, I agree with you. I think we have little pockets of people in our town that once they like the idea, they jump right in. So um, I think this is uh, the beginning of something great. I agree, I agree completely. And again, my thanks go out to Gail. I think that, um, you know, this is, this is the time that in the spirit of Shrewsbury needed to come out. So I think it's fantastic. Maybe perhaps Gail would like to take on that other uh, board member position, just saying, uh, you know, that we could reach out to her. Um, it sounds like it would be a wonderful fit. Uh, just for the sake of time, I'd like to keep going to uh, F to grab and go meals for September. Um, I have to say, I put it out in the uh, August newsletter and people, I, I seriously received phone calls and people are like, did I read this correctly? 
you know, you're going to do this for us. And there are people that, you know, are waiting to call to get on um, and to try these meals out. The question that I did have for you, because I've been going back and forth with Christine and I looked back in the minutes for uh, July was, um, did we put a cap on this? Christine seems to think that there was a cap of $500 for the grab and go. I, I didn't see it in the minutes and I, I didn't have a chance to go back and look at the video. Um, but is there a cap on the grab and go meals for September that we're paying for? Or is it just, you know, you're just allowing? Barbara? I, I remember that we did put a cap on it. Louise, do you remember how much? Um, I know we talked about it, but I don't think there was an official vote. I think we talked about 500, but, um, and then somebody else said, well, let's just go see how long it, it will go. I don't know, but I don't think there was an official vote on that at that meeting. So again, I didn't see it in the minutes and I do want to make people aware that, so each meal is a uh, suggested donation of $2.50. I can tell you that, as I mentioned, there have been people that are just astounded that uh, you know the Council on Aging is offering this, and it honestly gives me chills at the fact that people are so happy that you know our department is doing this. So um, I don't know if the board wants to vote on a number or just see where this goes, or um, you know I can get frequent updates. Um, it's pro it's probably best to vote on a number. Um, let me see if. Uh, What's Christine Shashi? and Shashi? Yes, go ahead. Um, I'm thinking if you, if you put a number in, um, you either have to limit per day because you don't want to get up to the 17th of September and not have any money left. So you're going to have to, in some way, adjust it per day so that you have an e equal amount of money each day to give out. Um, well, and can I just comment on that? So just keep in mind that each day the menu changes and people might prefer, say, chicken parmesan over a hot dog. Um, so I don't know if... No, I, under, yeah, I, I understand that, but I said you don't want to get to the end of the month and not have any money left. So if, if you're going to set a limit, you have to think about approximately how many people right. per day and what it would be times... I mean, do we have 10 people a day or 50 people a day or, or what do you think would be? And then multiply that by the 250. Right. So the five, if, if, we were to, if we were to do $500, it would equal out to 200 meals for the month of September. And that's not enough. Excuse me. Uh, you can get some real data from Beth as to what she's actually handing out. And that might give you an indication that, okay, to this, we add a certain percentage to account for the people who could not afford the $2.50. It might give us an idea. Do you, have, so, do you have any numbers from Beth? So the only numbers that I have from Beth are the people that are actually already have applied for the Meals on Wheels. Um, and it's about, uh, I think it's between 50 and 65 people, I think that do get the Meals on Wheels. Um, just just keep in mind that the reasoning behind this was, um, again, part of the connect and assist was our concerns are for the fall and winter for people that aren't going to have enough food um, and might be leery of applying for Meals on Wheels, whether or not they just don't understand it or they're not sure if they're going to like the meals, is it worth doing? Um, so the, the reasoning behind the September you know, paying for the meals was hopefully these people will actually like it. And if they want to continue and understand that it is a suggested donation, it's not a required donation. So I'm sure that, you know, ESWA, who is a fantastic organization, can work with anybody who might need the meals. But I think it's our great opportunity of just saying, you know, these are what the meals are like. Do you like them? Do you need them? Here they are for the rest of the fall and winter. So I think I, I, I think I think it is necessary that you vote on on a on a amount. Well, then I would suggest that we put a thousand dollars, and at our September meeting, if we find that most of that's been used, or I mean, I still think we need to 
to clarify each day. You know, one day you may have 50 people and the next day you only may have 10, but you still need the money in case those 50 want to go every day. You don't know. You don't know what it's going to be. And I would, so parade, I would parade it so much a day and then cut it off each day rather than wait till the 15th of September and say, oh, there's no money left. That's, that's my personal feeling. Yeah. So our uh, next... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Barbara. Um, I'd hate to have a cutoff. And especially when we're trying to introduce the um, idea of, hey, this is available. And even if they, um, they get it free in September, perhaps they will say to themselves, it's worth it. I'm going to give the 250 uh, so this is an introduction and a, and a celebration. So I'd hate to have a cutoff on, a, on the days. Uh, but um, what, what we could do is um, uh, revisit it, you know, and add more money. It, it's really just the celebration of here's what we have available, yeah. you know. Yeah. And and so um, I really would like to see a lot of people sign up for it to see what I would too. yeah mm -hmm. to see what it's like. So I'd hate to have a cutoff or any negative thing, you know. In, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. that's that's the problem, you know. And I and so I, I do agree with Barbara. And the next our next meeting is on September. It would be September 9th, I believe, right? Um, the second week is it the second week in the month or is it third? Second week. Second. So that's the ninth. So I could come back with an update from, you know, the first to the ninth and let everybody know how many meals that are going on. Um, and then we can decide from decide from there. I think, you know, that first week and a half is going to be a good telltale of anybody who is actually taking advantage of it. Uh, the menu will be in the newsletter. The menu is on online. Uh, people can call and get the menu. Um, but I, 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 I do lean more towards what Barbara is saying than to try to do a cutoff on a particular day um, because we don't really want to turn anybody away. And in some cases, this might be their only meals that they've actually been, will eat yeah. um, in quite some time. So, um, yeah. but that's for me to judge. That's for the, the board to vote on. Right. Shashi? Yes, go ahead. I make a motion that we allocate a thousand dollars to the um, to the grab and go meal. I couldn't say grab and go meals hang on. for the month of September. Louise, hang on. I think what Barbara is saying is let's get some more data. Let's leave it at five. Is that what you're saying? No. Just go up to thousand now. Oh, absolutely. I I just don't want any negative. I wouldn't want anything negative. At this introduction, this celebration of here's what we have available. So I would I would say yeah, at least a thousand and right. yeah. The, the, the only one question is: there some perhaps what we should do is if it goes above the thousand, and if we can't afford it, maybe we should have an emergency meeting of the board and see how much more we want to put in. Anybody think about that possibility? I can certainly. You need a second for the motion, Chashi. No, 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 I'm not putting it to a formal vote yet. I just want to know what people think of that. No, Chashi, there's a motion yes. on the floor. You need a second. I second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now you can talk. <laughs> no, no. The, the interesting thing is that the point I'm trying to make is $1,000 may not be enough. Can I? So in which case... Do we then meet and then vote additional funds, or do we cut off the thousand? Can I get? Can That's I? That's what I would like to have a discussion on. Can I mention something? This is Zoya. Go ahead, Zoya. Uh, like Holly said, that on the ninth when we have the meeting, she will present to us how many people came in to take the meals. So then we have an idea of how many people are coming in for the grab and go. And then we can decide whether we want to put more money in or the amount of money that we have put in is adequate. Yeah, that's the point, that we don't want to run out of money before the ninth. You don't think that'll happen? I don't think so. How not can, a thousand dollars, not a thousand dollars. I don't think it is either. I don't think it would either. But I think how about just to um, to make people comfortable? 
if it does go over a thousand, you can either grant me the ability to keep going or um, we do have to have an emergency meeting. Personally, I think I think that we're pretty safe. Um, Christine just mentioned that there's 21 days, not including Labor Day, with a thousand dollars. That's 19 meals a day uh, for the month of September. So if you want to make a motion that if it goes over, it's left to the discretion of the director on how to keep moving. And that's that's only up to September 9th. So you're going to reword your proposal, Louise? Um, no, I would rather have this motion and then do a separate one. Okay, any seconders? Anyone wants to second Louise's proposal? I already seconded it. This is Barbara. Okay. Anybody in, all in, Holly's in favor? Uh, I had to do a roll call vote. Oh, you have to. Yeah. So Louise is in favor. Barbara is in favor. I think we're all in favor. And I don't think there are any objections. Hello? Yes. No. Yeah. Nope. So yep. the motion is passed. Very good. Very good. That makes me, that makes me really happy. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to keep moving on. Um, so G is set, uh, Senior Center Furniture. So a lot of our furniture has already been delivered. It was delivered last week. Um, I went with the uh, I went with a gray color to kind of accommodate the walls and the flooring of what we already have. Um, there's still some to be delivered. But my question to the board is is that we do have several pieces of furniture that will have to be moved out. Um, and uh, which includes a, a sofa, a love seat, a couple of um, you know sporadic end tables and things like that. I don't know where this furniture originated from or how how we got it into the center. Um, but I would like to um, either I would like to get the board's approval to um, dispose of it or perhaps even put it into the October newsletter in case there's somebody that is is in need of furniture. Um, they would have to pick it up themselves. Um, you know, just so it's not thrown away or anything like that. Can anybody uh, fill me in on any of that? Shashi? Go ahead. I think Wait. that the, you're talking about the couches and chairs and the, and the lounge. We some, yeah, we have some couches, um, some chairs. I some, think, I know, think that's something. original. That's original to the senior center. That was, and um, it's been uh, not reupholstered, but it's been, kept up the whole time. It's been cleaned. It was cleaned a, a year or so ago. Um, and uh, so it's been well taken care of. But I think all that's the original furniture. I don't know if Habitat for Humanity takes um, that kind of furniture or not, but that's a good place on Lincoln Street. And so I'm not sure. sure if they pick up. They might, but... Um, I'm sure I'm I can... Sure. I'm sure I can get rid of it um, one way or another. I just, I wasn't sure if I had to seek the board's approval before I do move it out of the center. Uh, I think the, the friends group recently had that cleaned. Yes. Different, didn't they? Yes, yes. Oh, so, okay. So if people remember, we had to uh, spend some formula grant funds, uh, you know, before before June 30th. And so we we it was voted that we would buy some new furniture and things like that, which I did. So now the, the new furniture no longer accommodates the old furniture, which is, um, in my opinion, uh, dated. Um, and what I'm, what I'm looking forward to is when we reopen you know, we're reopening with a refreshed staff. We're reopening with, you know, new furniture. You know, we're kind of doing up to date. So what for from the board, and I'm, I guess I'm going to ask if you can vote, is the fact that um, I can I can get rid of it um, in any way that I can other than having it destroyed because I do feel like it could be useful to somebody. So I would never have it, you know, torn apart or broken up or anything like that. But seeking the board's approval that I can uh, move it on. So yeah. can, can I mention? I think uh, the idea of putting it in the newsletter in case somebody wants it is a good idea. And if not, it can be disposed of as Holly thinks fit. Uh, Holly? Yes? I think 
the question of disposal would depend on who owns it. In other words, for instance, the library, when it got new furniture for new desks and everything, the old furniture went into a state warehouse. And they put it online, and anybody who wants it can come and get it. But you got to find out who owns it. Well, that's, and that's if exactly what I'm trying to get rid of it on our so own. That's you don't own it. So that's exactly what I'm trying to do. So I will uh, bring this up to Kristen Lass. Her and I are meeting at three o'clock today uh, to ask her if there are regulations of, uh, for me just giving it away to anybody who might need it or whatnot. Um, and uh, whatever she comes back with and says is how I'll I'll handle it. Uh, Shashi, Shashi. Hang, on Shashi. Shashi. Hang on a second. The state Shashi. does have a, the state does have a used furniture website where it keeps all their different offices that have updated. They keep that old furniture in one place and you can go pick it up. Different departments can look at what they need, what their needs are. But from what I understand, the really good stuff disappears very quickly. Louise, go ahead. go ahead, Louise. Um, the furniture was part of the original building and they had a big drive. Uh, basically it was through the Friends but it was the building oversight committee who was in charge of this. And uh, they got all the donations and that's what they bought all the furniture with, was the donations from all the people at the time the building was new. So um, as far as ownership goes, I don't know that once it was given to the senior center, um, I'm assuming that that was the ownership would be the COA. Well, check that with Kristen. I don't know if she's aware of that. Um, I know who was uh, head of that committee back 20 years ago. Uh, Helene Tenenholz was uh, one of the members of that. I think she was chair of that committee. And the furnishings, I forget the name of it, but something in furnishings. And then that's how they, uh, they got all the furnishings for the, the senior center, or through donations. I think we can. We, is, is there anything more to discuss about this? I think we can move on. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Jenny, I, I apologize to interject. Um, I have to get off the call because um, I have another call at work. So um, I will. I will hopefully catch up by reading the minutes. Thank you, Virginia. Bye, Barbara. Thank you. Bye. I see. I see Barbara's hand. You're on mute, Barbara. I make a motion that we um, allow Holly to take care of the furniture, get rid of the furniture, give the furniture away in the in the October newsletter. I second that. Good. I second it. Holly, you agree? I do I agree. agree. Um, obviously, they agree. Zoya agree. I do. Cliff. Cliff is not participating. <laughs> okay, the motion is passed. Yeah, I, thank you. I, I lost my vote. I don't have one anymore. Well, I think you said <laughs> September 1st, so you're technically yeah. on the board. Okay, so I can keep going. So H is uh, the Senior Center Policies and Procedures. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time in the past couple months during this time, this pandemic and looking at different policies and procedures and kind of grabbing some from here, there and everywhere. Um, so right now, with all the forms that uh, was given for today's meeting, the senior center policies, the scan card and waiver. Um, oh, my gosh, I'm losing uh, thought on on all of them. Um, I had given all of them to Kristen Loss and she has sent them to town council to uh, be reviewed. And um, so hopefully by the October meeting, you'll all have any revisions that are needed. So then they can all be voted on and hopefully put right up to the website because I know uh, I've been looking at the strategic plan and I know that all of those forms, um, you know, were talked about. And um, so hopefully in Octo the October meeting, uh, we'll have some finalized uh, 
things on there. Um, as far as the resource guide, and I, I, was, I was hoping Virginia was going to stay on for a couple more minutes, but, you know, the resource guide, not many senior centers offer that, um, very few as a matter of fact. And I, what I hope is that once we get them finalized and make sure, I, what I want to do is share them with the regional directors to see if anybody else has any ideas um, or thoughts or maybe things that I omitted um, that we can add on there. And again, um, get those finalized. And just like the connect and assist, we can share those with other uh, towns. So, you know, so they don't have to reinvent the wheel. They might want to make some adjustments so it better fits their town. Um, but I'm hoping that that all of the efforts that I have put in and as well as the board and some of our volunteers that have helped um, behind the scenes on all of these things um, will get approved and will make everybody's life easier, not just the Shrewsbury community, but everybody uh, locally. So there, is, re there isn't really much to talk about those policies and procedures. I appreciate everybody's feedback that everybody gave me. Um, I put in as many revisions as necessary. Louise, I see your hand. Um, you know, I've had a problem with some of the way it's written. And um, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if I went through it and in, in red letters put in what I'm thinking of, if that would help you look at it. Uh, my One of my major problems is the two sections that say Participants must, colon, and then they list about 10 things. Well, those are in, some are in complete sentences, some are in partial sentences, but if you use the words participants must, then it should just complete that sentence. It just doesn't make sense the way it's, it's, it's so, uh, you know, the thought is there, the idea is there, but the way it's presented, also, in the um, the section about the um, uh, well, I forget the name of it. it it's at the end. The uh, emergency training. We have the evacuation, and we have the shelter in place. But in the directions, the way it's written, you go through the whole sentence, and then say, "This is what you do for evacuation." Instead of saying for evacuation, this is what you do. When people are in a hurry and reading, if they see, if they're looking for shelter in place or if they're looking for evacuation, they don't have to read what all is there to find out the directions that they're looking for. Those, sure, are, the I, things, those are the things that I'm looking for to, to make corrections in. I said it's not the specifically the content is the way it's presented. And I'm wondering if I went through and put it in red type and sent it to you, would that help you? So I did see the suggestions that you sent and um, I did make some of those before Kristen sent them off to town council. So what I would like to do is see what, what town council comes back with as far as feedback. Um, and see if they, um, it, you know, found the same thing that you found. I received feedback from everybody, and I appreciate that. Um, and I did make the changes uh, where I could, but I do understand exactly what you're talking about, Louise. So before those even um, go to a final draft, we'll make some accommodations to to make it so it's easy easier reading. And that, and that's the thing, you know. As I said, you know, you're talking to seniors. You're also yeah. talking to people if they're reading it in a sense of, of disaster or not knowing, and they're you know they're they're upset and trying to find out immediate information, and so you want it as simple yeah. as possible, or as readable as possible to get the the answer that they're looking for. Yeah. So, uh, well, if if you want me to do that, I'd be happy to, Holly. So uh, when you get the answer back, I'll be anxious to hear what they have to say. Okay, certainly. One certainly. minor one minor question, Holly. I'm not sure that we are actually completely closed on Christmas Eve. I think we're open till noon. Because the coffee hour, I remember delivering meals on Christmas Eve, and I know Meals on Wheels was open and Raja's Cafe was open, but they closed the place up at noon. 
I think they're okay. open half a day. That needs to be verified. Okay. I think there was no lunch served. No lunch. No, no, no lunch. lunch was served, but meals on wheels was. Rogers Cafe was open on Christmas Eve. And, okay. Uh, meals, and Meals on Wheels were, uh, were sent out. Yes, Meals on Wheels was open. Okay, I thank you for that. I did not know that, so I'll make those edits too. Um, so that's all I have for the director's report. Um, I already mentioned um, line item five for transportation. I gave you, uh, you know, Cynthia's update on her riders. Um, and uh, just to mention, we are still interviewing for two additional van drivers that we're trying to fill. Um, you know, our seniors being our COA van drivers, there comes a lot of anxiety with their positions uh, being on the front line. And I respect every single one of their decisions about whether or not they're comfortable coming back to work. Um, as I keep saying for everybody, and you know, in these times you can only be your best advocate. So, um, and what I've explained to the van drivers that have left or are on leave due to COVID is that, um, you know, if their positions are still available when this is all over, you know, they have, they would absolutely have their positions back. Um, you know, this is a different time and age. So I just want to make sure that everybody understands, understands that. Um, uh, moving on to item six, new business. I have a freezer. Well, question about transportation. Holly? Yes. How is yes. the edge and the use of the tablet working out? Is it getting any better? So with the, yes, so there was just some upgrades and some new tablets brought in. Um, it took some time to actually get them up and working just because of all of this remote work. Um, some of the things that RootMatch was doing, they were doing from their home and weren't able to. But I do believe that everything's up and running. Uh, there haven't been any issues um, brought to me by uh, Cynthia, our transportation coordinator, or our uh, van drivers. So everything just seems to be running a little bit, uh, you know, it's, it's running smoothly. Um, I think, you know, updates, continuous updates on those tablets are necessary, you know, as far as GPS and things like that go. Um, so as far as I know, um, everything is great. So if I don't get a complaint, I have to say, I have to give everything a thumbs up. Good. Um, so again, just moving on to number six, new business freezer. Um, so as everybody knows, you know, September and fall and winter, we're, we're hoping that people have the food that they need. And um, so I was looking at freezers to be rented. And just as I mentioned earlier into this, uh, into this meeting, um, I recently moved into, uh, into Lemonster. And a, a person that I know actually has a commercial freezer. It's uh, made by Imperial. Um, I sent a couple of pictures um, last minute before this meeting to everybody's email just to look at. Uh, the person that has this freezer no longer wants it. Um, it was originally purchased for, I think it was, uh, I think he mentioned it was uh, $1,250. And um, he, he said that if the COA is interested in it, um, he'd be willing to part with it for the amount of $700. Uh, I think the $700 and where I was looking at rentals for a month um, is actually quite a steal. We could, if we were interested, put some kind of clause on there that said, you know, as long as this freezer, um, you know, meets at least a year or two years requirements, you know, we wouldn't ask for money back or anything like that. Um, it's much cheaper than purchasing one. Uh, the one I was looking in is one of those ones where you actually bend over, put it into a freezer and then take stuff out. So you're piling stuff on top of it. This one is actually just kind of like an oversized refrigerator with, um, you know, capacity inside. Um, if you get a chance, uh, please take a look. Um, but again, um, he was asking $700 for it. It's uh, just under two years old. Um, and, you know, this is this is a opportunity that we could take advantage of, or I could look further into uh, renting one, which would end up being roughly, you know, $100, $150 a month just to rent. Um, is what is what I came up with. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to have any discussion on that, 
And, oh, and, and I, did, I do want to mention, I did. Um, the best you know, way that you can find is somebody who's a subject matter expert in this, because I don't know anything very much about freezes, except they keep it food cold. But mm -hmm. uh, do you know of anybody who knows this kind of refrigeration equipment, who's familiar with it? So I might be able to be from public facilities um, about taking a look at it. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, I could certainly do something like that. Uh, just to, just to see, um, yes. you know, I would recommend that. sure. So just to, for something to keep in the back of their minds, because I have been in contact with, um, uh, his name is Emmett Schmarzo and he's from elder affairs to see if we would be allowed to use formula grant funds to purchase a freezer, um, you know, with, and, and I did explain to Emmett about how, you know, our focus going forward is food for the fall and winter. So I'm hoping, you know, he would approve us to use the formula grant funds to do that um, if necessary, whether it's to purchase the one that I've sent you uh, via email or to purchase a new one or to rent. Um, but I, I do think it will be necessary. And, um, you know, I do hope that Elder Services of Worcester offers us another opportunity to accept frozen meals for them. Uh, remember the first time I accepted 40 boxes of 10 pound food, we gave those over to St. Anne's. And last month we accept, we took on 50 and I gave them over to the housing authority. And I have to tell you that Kelly Bergeron, the executive director over there, um, you know, she was just completely uh, smitten with the fact that she had food to give to the people, you know, at, at both Francis Gardens, uh, Elizabeth Gardens, and at the Towers. Um, and I just hope that those opportunities keep coming. And I hope that we have a place to, to store them. Um, because what we'd like to do, too, is kind of squirrel some away for us if we should ever receive that phone call where somebody is just dire need of food and for whatever reason I can't get a hold of St. Anne's or Elder Services uh, quick enough. Um, just a food for thought. Louise? Um, is this um, the same size or bigger than the one that's in the kitchen now? So it's, uh, it's honestly like it's the same size. So Same the, size. Yeah, so the one that we have in our kitchen is a double refrigerator with a freezer attached, and it is the same size as the freezer. The freezer. Yep. And this, okay. Good. Yep. And this one is, um, and it looks more like a refrigerator, so it's not as um, much of a kind of an eyesore if it was out in the open. Is there some place to put it? That's what I'm wondering where you might want to put it. So uh, my my thoughts is I would put it in uh, side room A, where the functions where the gentlemen's uh, the men's group was was being held, um, or or in B in the in the dining room area. Actually, it doesn't matter which one. Um, it plugs into a regular outlet. Um, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so there's no extra surge needed or anything else like that. So we could certainly just put it right in the dining room, so it's accessible to both places at both places too. Yeah. Um, I, I think it would be an asset. I think whether or not we take the one that was offered to us for 700 or we rent one or purchase one, um, I just think that, you know, it would be a smart move on our part to make that kind of purchase um, within the next month or two. Yes. Motion from the board. Um, so I think that, uh, how about pending, my, my thought would be pending um, some a little bit more inquiry on my part from public facilities about this particular refrigerator, uh, whether or not it was worth the 700 that I can make that purchase. If not, um, that I keep looking for another one come the October meeting. Um, I, I move what she just said. <laughs> what did she just say? Can you, can you repeat that so the Christine can write it down in the minutes? What was the, what is the motion? So, so again, I suggested the fact that public facilities, upon their approval, that this re, uh, freezer is, uh, you know, stands up to all requirements. We can purchase this one, or I come back in October with some other ideas about purchasing a new one or renting one. You got that, Christine? Did you get that? Yeah. Did you get the motion? <laughs> Barb's doing the right. So, Luis is in favor. Barbara. No, you need a second, Joshy. I thought you already seconded. Barbara already seconded it. No, I didn't, but I will. 
<laughs> okay. Good. Uh, Sawyer. Yes. Christine. Christine yeah. Campbell. Oh, Campbell. Christine's Laura. Oh, yes. And so again, I, I can't. Yes, I can't vote. vote. I. I can't vote. I can merely suggest. Okay. The motion is passed. Great. And Norma. Okay. You she are here. Good. <laughs> he said it was okay. Okay, fantastic. That's good to know. <laughs> so, so that's that. Uh, we're almost on two hours here. That's all I have um, yeah. to talk about yeah. today. And I just have to say, I don't know how Cliff can leave all of this because he's going to be so lonesome sitting without <laughs> once a month. You see the electric keyboard in the background now? He's going to play some ragtime for us. Oh. Expert in ragtime. And once we get back together, Cliff, you can come sit in as a visitor. With if there is then no any other further yeah. discussions, anybody I'd, I'd be on? happy to. <laughs> so so that's all I have on my end. Um, I'm, like I said, I think that even though this meeting went a little bit longer, I'm super happy about the things that we got accomplished today. Um, I'm, I'm really optimistic about the future um, and the things that we can all do collaboratively as a group. Uh, just to mention again, Cliff, again, thank you. It was my pleasure meeting you um, and Mary. And I wish you the best and, and you better come and visit us or I'm gonna take um, you know, some offense if you don't. Uh, <laughs> and we certainly uh, will. We'll be <laughs> oh, so if anybody I has anything else. No. All right. I someone move, make I move, the way I, I move the way adjourn. I second I second, second the motion. Good. Okay, everybody. thank you everybody. Enjoy your day. Stay cool. You anybody too. object? Thank you. Motion is adjourned. Motion is accepted and meetings adjourned. Very good. Thank bye you. Bye. Bye bye all. Thank you, Mark. Bye.